want to know how you prepare for a golf tournament. Ah, uh, well, I um, hit balls maybe 20 minutes, putt a little bit, smoke four or five cigarettes, drink three Diet Cokes, and go to the first tee. Some days I won't even go to the range. Welcome into the Daily Puck Drop, the DPD. It's your daily sports show about nothing. And, of course, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it includes the great Jim Moore. Uh, we release uh, these shows every day at 10 a.m. on PuckSports.com and, of course, on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you find <laughs> Uh, your podcast. You can like, follow, subscribe, leave a comment on all the different platforms. You can also uh, follow along on the social media platforms on X and Instagram at Puck2040, plus on TikTok at Puck underscore sports and Jason Puckin on Facebook. And, of course, at Cougs Go for Jim Moore, who is back in the Bend garage. We are in the Puck Sports Studios, which, of course, is built by Limbach Lumber, the Northwest premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings, family-owned and serving the Northwest since 1930. Summer is here. Well, it used to be here because uh, it's pouring rain on Monday. But that, of course, is summer and deck season. Contact the fine folks at Limbach Lumber, 206 206- 782-3487. Visit them online at limbacklumber.com. Puck Sports Studios built by Limback Lumber. All right, sir. Yeah, it's pouring here, by the way, on a Monday. Uh, how's the weather down in Bend, Oregon? A little cloudy, a little smoky. Not bad. It's supposed to be 80 degrees later today. And then warming trend. It's going to be 100 by Friday, I believe. Oh, sweet yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't feel like 100 here, though, Puck. I, I, I don't know. Oh, it's a dry. It's, oh, it's a dry heat. Well, it's I, yeah. Maybe it's just the river thing. I don't know, but it hasn't really bothered me. I thought a hundred b- would bother me, but no. You enjoying okay. the rain? You kind of need uh, the rain, don't you? I yeah. I mean, it's it's fine. You know, I I prefer you know I prefer the warm sun, but yeah, it's the rain's okay, not bad. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's like it's dumping like it's November. Do you still want to move to San Diego though? Of course, it's uh, every day of the dream. Every day, at least every other day, I look at houses. So <laughs> every other fun. day you're still doing it. Yeah. Is that, is that a problem? <laughs> no, I don't think it's a problem, but come on. It's your hometown. Seattle's your hometown. Embrace it. Seattle. Embrace Ballard. Embrace traffic. Embrace it all. I could embrace the beach a little bit more. <laughs> I think I'm built for, I think I'm built for San Diego. It's just right. It's right. It's in my you're, DNA. You're built for San Diego. Well, you know what I mean. Not physically built. <laughs> like, like mentally you're, built. You're built for just like flaunting it on the beach or what? Yeah. Like no, here I'm, I am. I'm, here I am, ladies. Come grab me. It's I may be taken, but I could be all yours. <laughs> how much we do gotta, you, Hey, when you have your shirt off, when you have your shirt off, how much do you suck it in? Uh, I don't really suck it in. And and sometimes when I get out of the pool or the water, I'll do a good suck in. Yeah. 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 Is there so much, is there so much there? Is is there so much there that it's pointless to try and suck it in or I feel like it doesn't make much of a difference. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay. I'm giving, I'm I'm giving you a hard time, but I, I got to admit that I'm, I'm a suck in kind of person. I I think everybody is. I suck it in. And I try and fake it as best I can. And then, but I am self-conscious about the hair on my back. And my wife keeps talking about, get we got to get care of, we got to get you in to wax it. And I, I don't want pain. I, I, and so I'm, I'm wrestling with that, whether I want, whether I'm so vain that I would do that or just say, sure. screw it. I'm 67 years old. I don't care what I look like. I think you should do it. I think to try it one time, get it ripped off. See what it feels like, and then you know, decide for yourself if you want to continue to do it. Or you could just do the permanent one. They've got the laser hair removal. Hey, laser. Hey, if you're a company out there, a laser hair removal company, yeah. and would like some advertisement here on Puck Sports and would like to sponsor uh, the show, the podcast, uh, you know, throw some shekels our way for Jim Moore. Okay. Yeah, that'd Let's be great. It. That'd be great. Yeah. All right, so Monday we got a lot to cover. We got the Mariners, we got the trades, we've got uh, we got a red hot baseball team. I mean, I know they beat the crap out of the worst baseball team in MLB, but whatever. They 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 swept them. Think they're flying high. We've got an announcement on tomorrow's MLB. We're doing a live trade uh, MLB show. I did extend an offer to Jim, and Jim said, "What am I going to add?" <laughs> I did. That's exactly then, what I said. 
That's exactly I'm what doing the said. listeners a favor. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, you know, they need to get Yandy Diaz. Uh, they need <laughs> like, Is what that- the hell? We've got a we've I don't, in case people missed it because on fr- we did this on Friday I believe on Friday's program we we made a bet we made another quarterback bet yeah. so I think we've got to, we've got to recap that and of course we end every daily puck drop at the end of the show with uh, with hey what the puck I've got a couple of baseball questions for you we played our last um, club tournament this weekend. And so I've got to cut. Have you ever umped before? Are you a good, do you know the rules of baseball pretty well? Pretty well. I umpired okay. when I was probably, I don't know, 18, 19 years old, and I would do 13 to 15-year-old games. Okay, so I've got a, I've got two questions for you coming up at the end. And then an old friend of ours uh, returns, and we'll have to uh, update everybody on that one. Where do you want to start? You want to start with the Mariners? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, huh? it's, your, it's your deal, Puck. You do whatever, man. We can still You're... talk about back hair if you want. Whatever you want to talk about. I I'm here say, for you. I In my say garage. That you, I, the, the garage is great. It's better than the gravel pit wherever you were at. <laughs> Looked like you were about to die. It, honestly, on Friday's show, I go back and watch where Jim was doing the show from. Yeah. He was doing it from some, from a, some abandoned lot. And then you, you you looked like Nick Nolte, for God's sakes. You hadn't shaved. Your hair was all over the place. It looked yeah. like this is where this was the last show for you. Yeah. And I, not to be morbid, that you were you were going to die after that. I look like a hobo. Yeah. I could give you that hobo look again if you want. You're pretty good uh, there. No, I, I enjoy yeah. the uh, the not hobo look. Well, they're playing better baseball, huh? You and Kurt. It seems like they the bats were inspired by the uh, the pickup of Randy or Rosarina. My God, they just they just bitch slapped the White Sox for three games. Yeah, I saw that little graphic that Root Sports had the most extra base hits they've had in the series this year, uh-huh. and and that's the thing. Like you were saying, I mean, you could just say, well, it was the White Sox, big deal, but. I mean, if they had lost a couple games to him, you'd be that would be a big deal. And they didn't. They swept him. And then, oh. I mean, honestly, I don't think the what? Well, wait, God, I say I say a lot of stupid shit. No, I was we'll just, I was just ahead, a, continue. I was just about to say, I don't think the White Sox are that bad, and yet they're on a pace to be the worst team in Major League Baseball history. So scratch mm-hmm. that. Yeah, you know, they're twenty seven and eighty one. Get dump button they're, on this. Get Chris uh, Kidd we, to hit the dump button. Would you? No, they're they're twenty seven and eighty one. We keep this all in. We keep everything okay. in. There's all no right. editing. No, what I'm saying is, when I saw them in Seattle, I didn't think they were that bad. Now this weekend they look bad, but the three pitchers that they sent out there, those guys are good. Well, two of those the three are good for sure. major league starters, especially Crochet and Fetty, and the yeah. other guy, the rookie, he he's good too. So, and and we know that the Mariners can look feeble against aces as well as number five starters and they didn't look feeble at all this weekend it was fun to watch yeah it was fun to watch they they just seemed like they got and i think they talked about it and this is what i think trades can do and I, and it's just a uh i don't it's not talked about it enough and i think this is what's been missing from these guys for the last three years you know when they go out and and, and made these these trade deadline moves I mean, they did it a couple of years ago with Castile, and that was a shot in the arm, and you, you saw the result of it. I always do think a hitter, a bat, you know, kind of hits a little differently, right? I think it changes the dynamic more because it's an everyday player opposed to a guy that's pitching every five days, and that they needed another bat because their offense has been so has been so poor. And I think you just heard guys talk about it, Luke Rayleigh and Cal Raleigh, that uh, it just gives them an infusion of, hope and confidence and i think the message finally sent you know by this the the top of this organization that okay we're, we're not going to trade away like our two best relievers at the deadline like we have in the past we're going to actually add to this i think there's a lot of factors that go into this i think the number one factor why you've seen them been been more aggressive this year than they have been in years past i think it's the simplest reason in, in the absolute simplest those two guys, especially, De, well, DePoto, number one, he's last year of his contract. That's been widely reported. So he's like, uh, I better do something to kind of save my job. And I think that's causing him to be a little bit more aggressive uh, than he has been in the past. And here's the good news. They haven't traded anybody in their top ten of their prospects. If they want to go out and acquire another guy, and they want to pay a hefty price, they can. 
No, they're they're in great shape. I hadn't thought about the Depoto thing though. It's usually like you feel like his hands are tied, and um, but it seems like you you look on Twitter, they're one of the more aggressive teams right now, and and they're not done yet. They seem like they're still interested in in trying to get another bat. I, I love some of the if they could get Rooker from the A's, I'd be completely on board for that. I even I like Taylor Ward too. I mean the guys you Canna and I know you like Josh Bell, Yandy Diaz. I I, uh, I mentioned, I mean, but. I think Josh Bell is just a a flyer. I mean, they they just released him. Now he's got. You'd have to owe him some money. So I don't. I don't think you want to pick up that. But I mean, a, a, a guy. If you don't, I only brought it up just because if you can't, you know, pull off another trade for some first baseman, he's out there and available if you wanted to grab him. But um, yeah, but you know, you, the, the the mental part of it though, Puck. I, I think you're yeah. right about that because the Rose Arena hadn't gotten there yet on Friday. And yet we knew about the trade. And by the way, it was pretty cool what he did down there in Tampa Bay. Oh, sitting with Going the fans. out in the left field stands <laughs> and sitting with him with his family and thanking him and everything. Yeah, that was pretty and, cool. Uh, yeah, but so he wasn't in Chicago yet. And you get eight runs in the first inning. You don't have Julio in the lineup. You, you're trotting out the same lineup that we think is trash anyway. And they get eight runs in the first inning. I would contend that if they hadn't made that a Rosarina trade, even though he wasn't in town yet, that they wouldn't have scored eight in the first inning. Yeah, I think I just, they got a they got a lift. Raleigh yeah. talked about, you mentioned Rayleigh talked right. about, boost morale, boost confidence. It, it was a different team. And th- that pitcher, what, was it Thorpe that night? I mean, he's good. His ERA was right around three. Shut him down in Seattle. Yeah. Same guy, gives up eight in the first inning. Yeah. yeah, it was a huge difference. I think, yeah, that mental, emotional part of it, I think it, it kicked in once – once they heard about the Rose Arena deal. Yeah, I just think that I, I I think guys just get excited about it because I think for the first time since this kind of this core of this group has been there that they finally feel like guys that, you know, the ownership and DePoto and all these guys feel like they are trying to go out and win this thing, that they know that they've got they've got the pitching to do it, which clearly they do. Um, you know, it's elite. It's World Series elite pitching. I mean, this three-game series against the White Sox, and again, I know the White Sox are terrible, right? So it's, it's the disclaimer every time we talk about the White Sox. The starters gave up three earned runs in three games. <laughs> That's just stupid. It's just stupid what they're doing. And uh, and those three earned runs were just by Miller. I mean, Wu, Wu and, um, and uh, who am I blanking? <coughs> didn't give up an earned run just ridiculous but no you look at what miller did yesterday and he's he's been hot lately i mean well he's been good anyway but he's been great for the most part Uh uh-oh there's a squirrel going across the driveway and my dogs don't even notice it yet oh well this is gonna lead this is oh so the dogs are outside again yeah they're they're sitting here in the driveway i mean this squirrel is maybe 20 oh wait river's waking up to it but uh was I making a good point there? No, or was, you weren't. Was it worthwhile Let's... to interrupt with the squirrel? Uh, no, but it, it's now led me to uh, to circle back. Have we resolved our differences with the neighbor yet? Oh, oh, look, they've figured out. They can see the squirrel now. You want to see? Yeah, I mean, they're... See, well, they no. can see this. Well, I can't see the squirrel. I see just the sight. Oh, well, yeah. the squirrel's up in this tree here. Oh, yeah. That's, this, is, this is not good. Yeah, the neighbor for, that's mad neighbor. at me lives. The mate of the, yeah, his wife and, and him, he's, he lives in that house over there. Yeah, so and they're, he, they're upset that the dogs keep going in your yard. And there you go. Yeah. Going. Okay. Yeah. The last I heard from the lady over there was, keep your dogs in your property or on your property. Yeah. Oh wow! And I'm what gonna go folks. to. I'm gonna go to. Um, do you think it would help if I gave him a twenty dollar gift gift card to Dutch Brothers? I'm thinking about doing that and saying, "Hey, I'm sorry, I'm a shitty neighbor. I'll try to do better." Yeah. Well, but at the same time, your dogs are outside off leash. Well, they're on my property, though. Yeah, but how how soon before they they're on their property? <laughs> What are they doing God. over there? Are they just wandering around in their yard? Are they are they taking dumps? Are they are they relieving well, themselves yeah, there in their was, yard? Well, yeah, there's yeah, some some of all all of that going on. Do you see them relieve themselves in the yard and then just don't go get it? Or no, I wouldn't do that. I know you wouldn't, but yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. What, would you just let them out in the morning and don't know and don't watch where they go and then they well, I'm do, no, I, yeah, I did for a while. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they they don't go far. They don't go far, but yeah, they, I mean, this, this place I'm in, I mean, Jesus, there's, there's no yard. I mean, look at this. 
It's just like weeds and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask you, uh, when she said, keep the dogs in your yard, how was the tone? Was it a stern tone? Uh, the tone was, yeah, the tone was like, God, I liked it better when that house was vacant across the street from us. Yeah. And now, not only is it not vacant, there's four cars out in front mm -hmm. of our place. Yeah. And we've got two dogs, and one of which is barking right now. Because they, they finally I, saw the squirrels. I, I can't. Hey, River, I didn't, know, I, I didn't notice River. that the dog was barking. <laughs> didn't notice one River. bit that the dog was barking. Hey, hey what do you want from me? What, I, I, you River, know, maybe, no. Come here's here. Here's what I want from you. Put the dogs inside. <laughs> then they're just going to bark inside and want out with daddy. Just let them bark inside. We can't hear them when they're inside. Yes, you can. The door's just right over here. It's it's all good. The door's right there. All right, River. so they, they start at three. Get you want to take some. You want to take a timeout to get the dogs under control. No, I'm fine. He came right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they're not done want, yet. They're not done yet. They're not going to be done yet. They've got per perfect capital to sit there and make a trade. Uh, before the deadline tomorrow, I should, I'm going to tell people we've got no Jim Duquette today. Normally we have Jim Duquette on, on Mondays that we release at one o'clock, uh, with Bill Kruger, but no Duquette. He's going to be on tomorrow. I'm doing a special, uh, MLB trade deadline show, a live show on X and also on YouTube. Uh, it will start at one 30. So Jim's going to be on from one 30 to uh, two o'clock. So a half an hour. Uh, and then he's got to go and, and break up and do his own. Uh, his own show on MLB Network Radio. But for a half an hour, former GM of the, the Mets and Orioles, he hosts a, a, a GM show on MLB Network Radio. He's going to do a live show with us on X and uh, on YouTube tomorrow from 1.30 to 2 to get you kind of set up that last hour and a half or so of the deadline. And then the human pony cake has agreed to come on for an hour. Uh, Divish will be on from 2 to 3 live on X on YouTube as uh, we will take you right up to the uh, the trade deadline. So no Duquette today. And and I'm going to be intrigued. They've they've got enough to pull off another another doozy, whether it's Luis Robert Jr., who didn't look good in the series against the mm -hmm. uh, the Mariners, or I don't know. They, they There's so much smoke with them being so interested in Vlad Guerrero Jr. Maybe they, they entice them and they finally get uh, the Blue Jays to jump and they can – pull off a, a, a deal with uh, Toronto, despite all the reports coming out. It's weird with Guerrero because it's like, there's all these reports saying they won't want it. They don't want to trade him, but then they just, uh, then there's a many uh, equal reports saying how aggressive the Mariners are in trying to acquire him. So never say no. What, what do you think it would take though? I mean, <sighs> well, at least two of their top three prospects, it's, it's going to be, Emerson, yeah, but wouldn't Young. it be a major league starter too? Wouldn't it be somebody? Um, I, I, you know, Emerson, Young, Emerson. You know, again, that the, the combo of the top three. So Ford, Emerson, Young, Hancock, somebody else. Yeah. Okay. God, four, it just seems like players. some of these seems like some of these deals. Like you look at Tampa Bay and what they got for a Rosarina, and you go, uh. Eh. I mean, maybe it's going to work out down the road. Yeah, but and we then... talked about that deal. It's the, the it's the same thing that when they acquired a Rosarina. He was the twelfth rated prospect for the Cardinals. Yeah, and, that and then the other the other deal the Mariners made that everybody was like nobody's talking about is Stanek leaving. Like you... every a, a month ago, everybody liked Stanek. I think, and then not every back spasms and like and him. then <laughs> what was Owen didn't like him. Uh, I didn't like him. I, I just there's just something there was something off about him. I thought he was good for a little while, and then he, he was he bad, was. and now he's now he's a Met. Did so, you <laughs> did you happen to see what he did yesterday? No. Oh my God, this was, was his terrible, awful. This was his first game back yesterday, our first game with the Mets. He comes in right away and just gets pummeled. He pit an, one inning, two hits, three earned runs, two home runs, fifteen pitches. He is. So we're seeing the reason why he was a free agent so late in the game. Yeah, he was. It, because it seemed like when the Mariners got him, it was like, well, wait a minute. This guy was really good with the Astros. And, boy, you just slide him in, you know, with before Munoz. I'm going yeah, to pull up his, go, I just but... pull up his pitching. Like, he comes into the top of the seventh. Uh, first two pitches are balls. Third pitch is a home run. Uh, his, then his second at bat. He 
well, he gets out. He hits he hits Adam Duvall, <laughs> and then Austin Riley on the first pitch after he hit Adam Duvall hits a two run home run. It just was a disaster. Right away, can you imagine the Mets going like, "This is the guy that we acquired. He's terrible." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're they're not too kind to of that when somebody performs poorly in New York City. That yeah. that doesn't go over very well. I mean, you can get away with it in Seattle better than New York. Yeah, the sure. um, but I'm intrigued to see what they do. I, I'm just intrigued because that they have something that they've they've never had before, and that is like. Still the capital to pull off something big. Yeah, well, I mean, he just, DePoto said in one of those national radio shows, you know, we love our prospects and we also see the opportunity to win. So you can do both. And uh, I, I like what you brought up, too, about last year of the contract. Oh, for DePoto? But don't, I mean, do, don't you think that has a lot to yeah. do with it? They both are in the last year of their contract. Like, yeah. they're, uh, what, I mean, service doesn't have anything to do with the trades. I mean, I mean, maybe there's some input there. But, I mean, it's this is DePoto's yeah. thing. Of course he's feeling pressure. He's feeling pressure to, to do yeah. something to keep his job. And I, and I think when you are pressured or you feel – uh, feel that amount of pressure or you're pushed up against a wall and, and you can see that, oh, maybe my job is on the line, I think. And, and I don't think there was – I don't think uh -oh. it was a desperate move. I'm just thinking that maybe he was more active, more aggressive than he has, uh, than he has been before. What's uh, – Well, another squirrel joined the other one. You know, they, they, they travel they, in the squirrels do travel. <laughs> They're like deer. <laughs> and your dogs are reacting properly. No. Hey, River, River, come here. Here, look. Come here. Come here. I put my eggs in front of him yeah. and he came to me. Here, come here. Here. Here you go. Come here. Look. Right here. Anyway, what I was gonna say while I was distracted, I'll try and, you know, sure. Multitask. You um, okay, would you agree with me? Well, and we've been too a little too positive so far. And you guys are, are you and I are half empty glass well, guys usually. Uh yeah, I speak for yourself. So let's get back to the half No, you're half empty. Man. I don't think so. Come on. I you're, I don't agree yeah, with that. I don't agree with that yeah, assessment. You are. Sorry, I just don't. <laughs> well, you're not a ball washer. I do know that. I think we could see, we could have both right. agree that we are not ball washers of the team. But I like what they've done. Okay. Those are good trades what they've pulled off. No, I, I agree. I agree. But would you agree also that they've done enough to win the division, but not enough to make it to the World Series? I think they. I think it. I think for this to be a really successful, I don't think it's a successful. Well, I think it to be a World Series successful deadline. Yeah, they've got to add another bat. I mean, they 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 have to. Yeah, they okay. they still aren't. I mean, a Rose Arena is not going to change everything for them. And and I know they're going to get Julio back, and JP will come back, and and all that. But they they need to find one more. There needs to be one more player that they can add. And depending on who that that player is, yeah. I don't think it's going to be Rooker, and I don't think it's going to be Ward. They, they've never made trades with those teams. No, with Depoto. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't say. God, I love I those say two ever, players, but, though, especially Rooker. I mean, have they ever made a trade with Oakland? I don't think they've ever dealt with Oakland, and I don't think they've ever done anything with the Angels because that's where he used to be the GM. And I don't think you know Divish always tells me there's no way he's not going to make a deal with Artie Moreno, so. I don't think those two are going to happen. But you're right. Rooker would be a, a great addition. Oh, my God. Be terrific. What, 25 home yeah. runs? You have yeah, that Rooker, I mean, out? I think you know, we've mentioned his yeah. name a bunch, but I think Lane Thomas would be a great fit. It would be a great fit for them. You can put him out in right field, and just that would be a sensational one. Um, well, maybe, you know, the thing is, is that maybe they get in, and with their their superior pitching, maybe they can make a run like the Diamondbacks well, did well, last that's, year. Well, that's so. all. It, yeah, I mean, of course. Even even with you know even with having Vossler in there or, you know who else I mean some of these other guys I mean you could make could you win a World Series with Dylan Moore in your lineup with this pitching I think you probably could I, I maybe I think if you put sort Dylan of, I mean of. Dylan Moore in the role that Dylan Moore should be in yeah <laughs> why does everybody like Dylan Moore so much is he is it just because he's one you of those try, yeah, try hard he's unlike guys you. that we <laughs> he's like. I mean, America's always like, my mom is down here right now, and we watched a game yesterday, and she goes, you know, Jimmy, I just love Dylan Moore. And I, I go, well, Mom, you, everybody, everybody's like you. Everybody – can you find anybody that doesn't like Dylan Moore? because he's just the all-American look. That's why. Yes. That's is that exactly what, it is? what it is? It's the all-American look. 
I mean, because he's not really that good. I, mean, I guess we like his mm-hmm. versatility. It's an all. Don't you think it's just the all American yeah. look? I mean, that's what it I has guess. to be. I mean, you think people in New York would like Dylan Moore? Probably again, not. depending on the role. Like, if you for a utility <laughs> guy, yeah, he's a good player for a utility guy. Yeah, move him all around and play him a all bunch right. of different positions. You need that, don't you? Yeah, and and really, I. I'll take Dylan Moore over JP's and what JP's given you the last month. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, does it, does it, we, I think we talked about Friday, but did you miss JP mm, over the weekend? Well, no, but I'd like to have JP, you know, <laughs> healthy and, and on the, on the team, but I mean, he hasn't played well this year at all. And you want him back hitting, not you want him back hitting. Ninth, I don't want him hitting lead off. I think they have their lead off hitter and they, they better not move him out of that lead off spot. God, did they find I, gold with him or if, what? If they, if when he comes back and they move and they put JP back at leadoff, it will be just a a terrible decision. They cannot do it. This guy, you ride this guy until he falls apart. But Victor Robles, he's just he is. I looked this up in July. He's four oh four. He's got OPS over a thousand in July. I mean, he's hitting three seventy nine, and I think it includes the one twenty batting average yeah. he had with the Nationals. That's how hot he's been with the Mariners. And the other thing about him, I think you've seen it. I think everybody's seen it. Just like in a Rosarina, too. And then you add Julio. You got three guys with some flair, yeah. a little pizzazz, yeah, yeah, panache, yeah, yeah. all those words. You do. Don't you? I mean, you guys, you, you got guys that look like, you know, that younger generation fans, you know, they're going to love everything. A Rosarina doing the, you know, the, mm-hmm, the arms mm-hmm. crossed and all that. Um and, and I just I love his glasses, his shoes. Yeah, you need some personality. They, they've been lacking personality. Yeah, sure. exactly. What about what about exactly. um, you know? Here's the thing I, I enjoy about uh, Victor Robles. The uh, did you see? Was it? I don't know which game it was. I think it was against the White Sox. Did you see when he was blowing the bubble during the at bat? I think it was Friday no, night. Maybe he's got this huge bubble that he's <laughs> he's he, he's put he's blowing out during the at bat. Like that's just phenomenal. Like, no, it's just he he just looks no. so relaxed all the time, and and you'd think he'd feel the pressure at some point. Like, man, I stunk in Washington. I really need to produce here in Seattle. It be, might be my last stop. He's and a great. Pro- you terrific. know, at one point he was ranked higher than Juan Soto in their organization. He was considered. He yeah. was considered the no. the better prospect. The only thing that worry that. The only the only my, the only downside to him a little bit is and Kruger brought this up and I didn't really notice it early on but then I went back and looked I think we've talked about this he's not very good out out in the outfield like the play the was it yesterday the one that went over his head yeah that's that was that yeah. wasn't a good play <laughs> like that wasn't good well okay okay but Puck he's an okay so, defensive yeah. outfielder but, that's, I, but- He's a plus hitter, plus 100%. hitter right now. That's what I even. That's what even I told like Kruger and I when we discussed this last week. I, that's what I said. I said he may not be good out there defensively. He make mistakes, but they need his bat and they need what he can do offensively. He gets on. There's the thing. It's he's such a throwback because he gets on base and then once he gets on base, especially with these new rules now of stealing bases, he just he mm-hmm. creates havoc. He can. It's amazing to watch a yeah. guy who actually can lay down a bunt. And it's it's he's just yeah. fun. They he he gets on there and creates his own offense. And that I I enjoy watching him play. It's fun. Yeah. No, I you just you think about the possibilities now. And we went into this trade deadline thinking that they probably wouldn't do anything. And if they did something, it would just be a ripple. And a Rosarina is a, a big acquisition. We can all agree on that. And then Garcia too, adding to the bullpen. How do we pronounce his first name? You, you got, the bullpen got better when How you got rid of Stanek too. First name? So. I've heard like three different. I don't know, but I like Yimmy, I like Yimmy, Yimmy or Jimmy. Yimmy. I thought I heard. I think yeah. I heard Riz yesterday driving around call him Jimmy, but it's. Oh well, maybe he is. But let's. Yeah, Yimmy's I'm going more with fun, Yimmy, Yimmy Garcia. That was a great pickup. Great. Yeah. Pickup. God, he's a big guy. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a grown that's a man man's out man. there. That's a man's man right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, but that's a great pickup. I would not want to oh, get good news on Santos. Looks like Santos would be okay. So now you've got your bullpen set. I mean, it's, that's a you got you got yeah. uh, oh the the Yimmer. 
You've got Santos, you've got uh, Munoz, you've got Gabe Spire. It's good. That's a good. That's four good guys at the back end of uh, your bullpen. All right, let's uh, let's transition over to the uh, the Seahawks. Um, for those who did not join us on Friday, Jim and I have got ourselves another quarterback bet. Let's refresh people here real quick. Let's say they're, uh, I don't know, five and six, five and seven. Don't you think at that point they're going to be going, well, Gino hasn't really been as good as we thought we would in this system and – and we kind of need to start looking toward the future because we're not going to make the playoffs. Let's yeah, yeah. give Sam a, a shot here against, you know, whoever they're playing, Tampa Bay or whoever. We'll see. Oh, so what do you want? How, many, how much do you want? 250. <laughs> okay. 250. <laughs> Jim <laughs> thinks that Sam Howell at some point will start a game this year, but yeah. but based on performance of Geno Smith, so no injury. So this has if if he gets if Geno gets injured and Howell has to start, the 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 bet is void. It's not about that. It's just I think I got based. you. I think I got you on this one. I mean, you still feel confident? You think you got me on this one? After like this weekend, when every story that came out from everyone that were that is reports on this team is like. <laughs> This is the best Geno Smith has ever looked. He's like elite. Jaron Reed called him elite. The, the, I don't know who was it. Brady Henderson. The gap between Smith and Hal is miles apart. <laughs> Does anybody go to Brady Henderson for it's news? My on the one, it's the first place I, I mean, go to. Seriously. First place. No. It's the hey, first place your wife you goes leave my to wife when you're on the boat. But. God, your oh my wife God, thinks she, every, every time we're on the boat, can yeah. we just swing by Brady? Hey, Brady sucks, though. He sucks, man. Shield Capadia was so much better than him. So, you, so much better. And then Shield what, left. What about Dugar? Do you Henderson. like Dugar? I mean, that, bringing in Brady Henderson, that's like, hey, we're going to pinch hit for Shohei. And then whoever you bring in, you, Do you got like Brady Michael Henderson? Sean Dugar? Uh, yeah. yeah, I do, you know, because I yeah. he's go Cougs. He likes the Cougar basketball Go team read a lot. his report. He's and uh, I like I like the man to man podcast that he love does that. with Chris Kidd. Even though we've never been invited on, yeah, still, still to this day. Yeah, so I do like Michael Sean, but but you know if he's reporting that Sam Howell is well, what's with all the? Oh, and by the way, when I said you went right to that number, why did I you go Duga, right I, to that number? No, no, well, because I didn't want to go five hundred. Um, because I've lost the two five hundred dollar bets with you, and so I thought, well, okay, I'll cut it in half. Well, no, I wasn't cutting it in half because I was actually when I said two fifty, I meant no, two dollars no. and fifty cents. Because when yeah, you because know, when people talk about that, like like you don't say a dollar forty eight, you say one forty eight. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. so two fifty. I was talking to two decimal point five zero is what I was talking about. No, actually, I was talking mm-hmm. two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. Yeah, I saw all did. those reports, Greg, Greg Bell. Bell, everybody. I didn't see it. No, the guy, Rob State, and he didn't say anything about it. <laughs> he didn't say anything about it. Rob's. Hey, the neighbor, the, the neighbor lady well, just pulled into the driveway. She's probably wondering there, so. why your dogs are outside. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure where Sky is. Do, Sky, come do here. Do you know where your other dogs okay, Do you know where Sky. both dogs are right now? Okay. I do. Yeah, well, yeah, in my I'm driveway. telling you. Do you want out? Yeah. I'll let you out of the bet. No, I'm not gonna let you out. Well, no, you're well, it's it's still early, and then why is Sam Howe so inaccurate? <laughs> well, because I mean, he's I know he's Sam Howell. I don't know. <laughs> didn't he look good against Everybody the Seahawks? Everybody looked did good I, against did the Seahawks. That? Didn't Mason Rudolph look good against the Seahawks? He did because they ran the hell out of Everybody the ball that day. Good. When do you think How will make yeah. his debut? Let me let me just go. Hold on. Let's just play along. <laughs> Let's play along for the audience. <laughs> they open up against the Denver Broncos. I assume Geno's job is uh, Smith's job is safe there. Second half against the Broncos because Geno, you know, he'll have a hard time. What about with, at with New England system. week two? Still okay? Week three against <laughs> Miami at home. Probably still safe by then. God. I really, you know what? I'm a dumbass oh, sometimes. I just, you know, for the content. hell of it, for the, for the sake of your podcast, oh. you know, I just try and have. Fun so this was and, all just entertainment. Yeah, yeah. You know, for the, I want to say something about that. You've won a thousand dollars, much more, me, right? Well, okay. Did you ever like say, "Hey, Jim, you know, this thousand dollars I won from you. You know, why don't I, I take you out to dinner?" 
why don't I buy you something? Because I, if I'd won a thousand from you, I would have done something like well, that. No, you didn't do shit. Because I don't want it. You didn't do a damn thing. Nothing. You just yeah. took it all for yourself. As I should have, and as yourself. anybody should have. And here I am working for nothing, helping you mm. out. If you still want me, you know, and I, you know, yeah, I, I'm just a good person. <laughs> just I just do stuff at the goodness <laughs> of my heart. <laughs> I don't think the lady across oh, the street. Well, of course thinks not. I'm I mean, you're, you're, person, you're currently but... both dogs are probably over there <laughs> crapping on our lawn for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, I, that you know, that bet looks it's like good. it's uh, well. Everybody's pretty much in your everybody's favor. Everybody's raving right about now. how good he's looked. Everybody, and he looks good. Have you seen pictures of him? He looks like he's. Remember last year he went to some new diet and it was like he only ate. I think he went vegetarian or vegan or something. He looked like uh, what's the right word? Is it manciated? emaciated emaciated oh thank e you. emaciated uh, he looked he didn't yeah. look good like he, like he lost too much weight he looked he yeah. didn't, and he didn't now you look at him he looks ripped he looks really really good so i mean it's a big year for him i mean he's essentially the last year of his deal i mean he's you're pl playing hopefully for for an extension but I, I don't know i've i have always maintained and it's a broken record and people that listen to watch this are getting tired of me saying this as as excited as everybody is about watching the defense, I just I can't wait to see what this offense looks like. I just it's so much potential on it, and so much so many weapons and right. Well, so if people are tired of hearing you say that. Know. Why did you say it again? I don't know. <laughs> what, what what was the point of that? Like regular listeners at PuckSports.com, or I need to hear it again. I heard that yeah, last week and the sure. week before. A, you know what? I think about it, it's a fair point. Why did I bring it up one more time? <laughs> well, I'm just banking on Sam Howell being the quarterback of the future and also that Geno is still Geno Smith. And, and there was a reason he was a backup in the league for as long as he was. And I, I'm with you, though. I, I I read these stories and I see that P.J. Walker might overtake oh, Sam yeah. Howell. I mean, Sam Howell might not even be active. Yeah, and well, I bet 250 on him. I need to get to training camp and talk to Sammy. And, and just, yeah. Get him going a little bit. Him yeah, get him going a little bit. Sam. So just send me that Sam, 250 come on, now, man. all right? Just send it to me whenever whenever you can. All right, let's, uh, yeah. let's wrap it up because I don't want to get yeah. you in trouble with your neighbor and the dogs. And, uh, and I feel like something's going to happen over there. You, you got it. Where, are she from Oregon? Is she a native or from somewhere else? Okay. I don't know. I, I just, I know that they've got a hammock um, in the front in the front yard there oh. and they have three kids okay. and they have a dog named huckleberry that is a, is a white dog like like river and but they don't let huckleberry wander they have him on a leash at all times and i'm going god it would suck it's, being it's huckleberry amazing they have the a river, white dog in you know bed. just, <laughs> just i set that up for you didn't i no it's one of those white of golden retriever looking type is. dogs yeah but I'm going to go over there. I'll report back on Wednesday. I'm going to give him a gift card. All right. Uh, we wrap up the Daily neighbor. Puck Drop, the DPD, yeah. uh, with uh, Hey, What the Puck, which is brought to you by Restoration One of North Seattle, your restoration company that lets you avoid the stress of water, fire, and mold damage uh, with their property restoration services. Locally owned and operated. them. Operated. Uh, make them your first call when damages affect your residential or commercial property. Give them a call at 206-817-8917. Visit them online at restorationone.com, the North Seattle franchise. All right. Our guy is back. <laughs> Love to see it. <laughs> Love to see it. He's back. He made his first public appearance since when? December? When he had an overdose? Yeah. December. Been a while. Yeah. And he, he I miss would not. Him. They, he, was, he talked at training camp, I believe, yesterday or this weekend and wouldn't say what, what led to the police coming to his home at like in the middle of the night. <laughs> but wouldn't say it was because of an overdose, but he has been long, you know, he's talked about his struggles with, with uh, addiction to pain medication, but that's probably what it was, but he's back. Well, did any reporters like grill him or was it just softball? <laughs> Love to see it. I think it was just probably softball after softball, but the good news is our hero has, uh, has is not dead yet. He's with us. <laughs> Love to see it. We need him in our life. We need him. Why do, why do, because why do we love the, him so much? It's probably what we would be like as an owner. 
That's right. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be doing the drugs yeah, that he's well, doing. You, you, but just sniff, you just sniff like I'd it, be yeah. having a ball. <laughs> he just well, says then, the and then he's in a rock too. band, and he it just doesn't feel or look like an owner. <laughs> he just he was he was a silver spoon kid, wasn't he? Right? Is that kind of was it? I don't know. I love that he hired what's his name during the middle of the season out of the ESPN booth. Uh, what was his name again? Oh, uh, the center. Saturday. Remember? Oh, right. yeah. yeah. I love that he hired him with, That's without right. any coaching yeah, right. experience. <laughs> I'll just I forgot I'll just about, hire I forgot a about that. I forgot about Jeff Saturday going there. All right, so our our hero uh, has returned. All right, hey, the uh, I'll, I'll I'll save this one for the last one. But have you seen where the NFL? So you know they're in this big lawsuit with like Sunday Ticket, right? And like. Whatever it, it's the big lawsuit that's going on uh, with Sunday Ticket in the NFL in 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 all of the legal material that, that uh, a part of that lawsuit that came out. Mike Florio of uh, Pro Football Talk had this. They're going to the NFL is going to retire uh, is going to require head coaches now to have in game interviews in both halves starting this year. Does it, who who I want to oh. know? We can't be alone. Is there anyone that's watching or listening right now? That enjoys those interviews. Anyone? What the NBA does a lot of that. They're terrible. I just can't imagine. I I know that they want to have. I know they want to have more access and go behind the scenes, but there there can't be a single coach that wants to do Nothing. that. And then every coach, no, what nothing. are they going to get from them? It's going to be a canned response. You know, we need to be more aggressive in the second half. What well, I mean, waste it's of not going to be. It's just all of it. I don't think there's a single fan that clamors for those interviews. None. Well, well, I would probably disagree with you on that. I mean, I'm sure there are fans that will enjoy that part of it. But, I mean, you know, I kind of get a kick out of it when Jen Mueller would do the Pete Carroll right before kickoff because you felt okay. like you were there, right. you know, that in the moment. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure they find value in it, That's or they true. wouldn't I be mean, doing it. They must. They must have something that tells them that, that people want it. All right, here's. The, go ahead. Okay. Let, let, okay. I know you need, you want to wrap it up. Well, if you know why I want to wrap it up, do you know what's you going on with the new kick? Then? Well, because I just want to get this in because I, I don't feel like I'm the only dummy out there that that wants to know about this. Do you have any idea what's going on with the new kickoff yeah, it's, rule? Yeah, it's like the, the they NFL can't, and how that's going to. Yeah, it's, it's and how it's that's going to look. And then they can't the the runners can't take off until the the ball is received, right? Yes. They, they can't leave. They've got to stay there. They've got to stay like on the on the certain yard. I, the 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 kickoff Who's team they? cannot move. Initially, when the ball is kicked, not they can't move the at receives. all until the guy receives the ball. It's the X, okay. It's the XFL right. rules. So I would think so. So it sounds like it's it sounds like where you end up with the ball is going to be more like the 30 or 35. Yeah, yeah, they're you, trying to, they're right? trying to increase, they're trying to increase returns. Okay. So here's, here's what we do. Like you're doing M's yeah. under, right? That's your big deal. Okay. We need to go over on NFL games okay. early in the season before Vegas catches up. Because if they're getting the, if, if you're telling mm -hmm. me the rules are going to be the way they are, the starting Yard line is going to be a lot farther than generally speaking in the past. Yeah. Am I correct? And I think if you get the ball at the 35 and you're starting your drive, you have a better chance of scoring than if you get it at I the think 25. I, you're Am making I great sense. Making I was any just sense looking here. at the. We okay, need I'm to in. cash in on that. I'm in. I'm. A, I'm a, we'll do okay. the over on every. We'll All do right. the over on every bet. All right. Over. I got to wrap it up with this. The uh, this okay. this is a, a a ruling. I want a baseball ruling that that we had some uh, tournament baseball drama this weekend. One, uh, how the game ended, which you'll you'll laugh. But I want to ask you this. All right, runners at third. Okay, we're, we're pitching. We're pitching. Who? Okay. What what, what league it's a, it's or, or eleven who, who U? Playing? It's a eleven U uh, tournament baseball tournament. Okay. Runners at third. Okay. Okay. Leading off. Our, our pitcher, okay, raises his leg, his front leg, okay, pauses for two seconds, I would say. Like like Nestor Cortez holds it up. Maybe not quite two seconds, but like a second okay. and a half. Holds it up. Doesn't come to home plate, never makes a move home, but goes to third. 
picks the guy off, but they called it a balk. Is that a balk? I don't think it is. He never made a move home. Uh, yeah. But he, yeah, he's the umpire, the field umpire. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, this is what I'm asking you. Field umpire said that once he raises his leg, it's got to be continuous. And I've, I. Was his leg, where, where, so his leg was, I, I would assume. Yeah, he's a right handed pitcher. Third when so he's, he's right handed pitcher. He's pitching from the stretch. Yeah. Raises his left leg. So toe is pointed, you know, to the dugout. It pauses for like a second. So it, it never no. it never was pointing toward home. No. It was pointing toward third. No. I'll bet the umpire did He was an older How guy. How old was you the know, umpire? He's older. Was it he's a probably in his oh. 50s, late 50s, 60s. How old are you? He kind of looked like you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? I don't th- so I've funny, never heard that the, the continues was – well, what what happened after that? Did, he asked him. Yeah, he goes, he goes well, what's, the, and... what, what's the? Why are you calling a balk? And he just said because it's got to be continuous. He goes, I've never. That's not. That's not a rule. That's that's. There's not. There's no such thing as that. He doesn't have to once he raises like. Did the, ba- did the, the base umpire the base get involved? Umpire, with the field guy. Yeah. Oh, the base umpire called it. He yeah. didn't appeal. He didn't All appeal right. to the home. No, I, I think you're whatever. right. Okay, here's here's the other one I want to ask you. This one, this ended the game. Okay, it was a great game. It was back and forth. We tied up in the fifth inning at six, and then they come back and they score four runs in the bottom of the or in the fifth. And then we score more. Run, uh, they score four runs in the bottom of the fifth. So we go to the top of the sixth inning, right? We got to we got to tie it to continue the game or take the lead, whatever. We get the bases loaded with with um, with one out. And we're about to turn the lineup back over, which is just killing it. So on our leadoff hitters up, Owen, Owen has just got on with a walk. All right. So kid hits it to the shortstop deep in the hole. He kind of bobbles it. Okay. Gets it, throws to second, gets Owen out at second, right? So he gets the force out at second. Meanwhile, as that second baseman is grabbing the ball and 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 get you know gets him out at second base, our hitter who hit it there, right? Our leadoff guy is already past first base, is already safe. Okay. Okay. So the second baseman catches it, force out at second, never even looks to attempt mm-hmm. to make a throw to first because the kid's already safe. Owen then, as he's walking off because he's out, bumps into the second baseman. The field umpire calls defensive interference. Double play calls the runner out at first. Uh, Okay, wait. Okay, the second baseman took the throw from the shortstop. Okay, catches it. Okay. As he's catching it, though, just as he's catching it at second base for the force, our runner has already like has hit the bag at first and is over like is safe the second baseman never even looks the first to throw the ball but as owen is out he's now and the and the and the second baseman has the ball he's not even going to throw because he, he he clearly the guy's safe by a mile and oh well how did owen run, how did owen run into the second no, baseman no, no, was no, he no, trying no. to break up the double play he catches okay no, no i got it. Okay, so he's Owen short was of second short base. of second he's, base he, the when guy, the guy caught this. I'm trying to figure collide. out how he collided okay. or okay. walking the guy, off the field. Walking off the field, though, I'm, I'm gonna I, I don't tell know you how if he you shut the fuck up. Hit the second baseman. <laughs> I'm trying hey, don't to get tell frustrated you. With just, me. I'm your buddy. I'm just trying to tell I'm you. Buddy. Just stop talking for a second. You tell the dog. He <laughs> kept, the guy okay, catches the ball at second base. Owen is out by like two feet. Yeah. Okay, the the runner okay. is already safe at first, so the second baseman's never going to throw the ball. Over. Okay. Okay, so he's on the back. So the guy is on the base, like he now has come off second base as Owen is walking around the base. He uh, to go, you know, to go back into the dugout. He bumps into him. Am I making sense at all? 
I feel like you're not making sense to you. No, you are making sense. You are making sense, but I was just trying to figure out if the second baseman was on the bag and Owen was out and, and came up short of, of the he, bag, he, he, how they he ended up the rushing ball, each other. He catches the ball, force at second base, takes like two steps off of the, of the bag, like towards center field. That's where Owen then hits yeah. the bag at second and then is walking around behind second base back to the dugout and just bumps into him. And okay. the field umpire calls interference. Okay. Okay, let's say that didn't happen. The run the run scores. Ten seven. What, what would the score have been then? Well, oh, you, two you would outs still with be runners alive. on you'd with be, first be, and third. You'd be with first and third. Two, three hitters coming up. Yeah. Who have had like five hits in the in the game. So Okay, so we'll, well agree that that was a shitty call. What, what the home, said, what, well, what the the home plate umpire but the, say? The guy makes the call, okay? I've never seen that. Guy makes the call. I, I got to call it defensive interference and runs off the field. I mean, sprints off the field into the parking lot. Sprinted. <laughs> Probably because he knew it was going to uh, be a Here's I'm, what I'm convinced. Call. Here's what I'm convinced. I mean, did, did, did anybody, did you... Did, did, did we you tried to go to the home plate umpire. Home plate the, umpire. Home plate umpire. It. the guy ran off. He didn't even go and talk to the home plate umpire. He ran off. And then the best part was that, that we started the game early because these two guys had to go and ump another game. I'm convinced they want the guy wanted the game to end because he needed to go ump another game. It was terrible. It, I mean, in, wow. you normally, you know, these guys volunteer their time and all that kind of stuff. But this was awful, awful. So what were just, what were you I doing was, at the time? I was keeping score and game changer. Just shook my head. Was like this is just no. You, you didn't you know. didn't yell. Yeah. Oh. I know you have. Yeah, All right, I'd that's uh, that is uh, hey what the puck is yeah. brought to you by Restoration One of North Seattle. <laughs> Give them a call at two zero six eight one seven eight nine seventeen. Visit them online at restorationone dot com. All right, take care of those dogs. Don't let them poop in your neighbor's yard. Hey, feel free to bring up any you know baseball scenarios in the well, future. Yeah. That went really well. You think it had any? You think it had anything to do with your kid being involved that you were? Well, so I tried to. I mean, or... it would have been a better story if if I wasn't interrupted every five seconds about it. <laughs> oh shit! That would have been a. Uh, Are would have you been a much... kidding? I went through two and a half years of being interrupted would, by you, and I would have been a much better segment if, if you would have just stopped and it? listened and then not distracted because your dogs are chasing squirrels. Daily Puck Drop released every day at 10 a.m. Remember, all guests at 1 o'clock. Please like, follow, subscribe, comment on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and, of course, you can find all the content at PuckSports.com. Jim will be back on Wednesday. We'll talk to you then, Jimmy. No shoes, no dice. No no Anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>